All right, everyone. Today, we're going to take a look at uh, SAS Intelligence by Act 2. Uh, this is a KPI metrics um, tracking and reporting engine that we've built on the Intact platform. Uh, it enables very deep and granular visibility into uh, the activity that's going on within your Intact environment. Uh, it, we are doing things like automatically diagnosing transactions uh, as they flow through the system and bucketize them, bucketizing them appropriately into the uh, CMRR buckets um, and categories uh, as you would uh, expect. So if you take a look here, we have our uh, a quick rundown of the uh, application features. Um, we're tracking all the SAS KPIs that you would come to expect. We're looking at things like CMRR, ARR, bookings, uh, customer renewal and churn rates, LTV to CAC, uh, gross dollar and net dollar retention, and the like. Um, we're also tracking a number of metrics automatically from a CMRR perspective, things like new CMRR, add-on CMRR, uh, churn CMRR, but in addition to that, we go even deeper into the information that's coming through the application and find things like uh, uplift or uh, increases in price or decreases in discounts. We find the alternative to that, or the opposite of that, which is markdown, which are those uh, situations where upon renewal, we've had to drop prices uh, to retain a customer or to retain a customer on a particular product. Um, we look at things like pending renewal value, um, that, that which is uh, coming up for renewal out into the future. We look at your renewed CMRR, as well as going even to the extent of looking at the foreign exchange impact on CMRR year over year or contract over contract and the impact that has on your total CMR value. We're also tracking things like customer uh, customer metrics, um, bucketizing those customers that are new customers that have come through the door, customers that are recovered, i.e. they, uh, they turned and returned to us. Uh, we have uh, customers like churn customers and those customers that renewed as well as even cancellation uh, and debook customers. Some of the notable features of the application and probably the most important uh, uh, portion of the of the application is the automated metrics tracking. So all of these metrics are being uh, entirely automated by the system as the transactions are flowing through. Uh, it's making decisions, it's analyzing, diagnosing, and uh, bucketizing all of the CMRR in real time and making those metrics available to you for consumption. Uh, we allow for a number of uh, customizations on top of it from a calculation and KPI metrics reporting perspective. And we support uh, both of the intact modules from a order to cash perspective, both uh, the contracts module and order entry. Uh, and really, this product was developed based on our extensive experience in working with numerous sophisticated SaaS companies, both private and public, uh, all struggling to achieve the same objective, which is access to SaaS metrics that were real-time, automatic, reliable, and insightful. Uh, every one of them was ready to ditch their Excel-based models that were lagging weeks behind, and they were manual, error-prone, or lacked the details needed to truly analyze the business. And that's where this SaaS intelligence product really was born out of. So what we're going to do today is take a look at um, a scenario uh, through the contracts module. We'll be doing a contracts demo where we're going to um, perform the creation of a new contract. We're going to do a midterm add-on. We'll do a late renewal of a contract with modifications. And if we have time, we'll walk through the churn of a customer. So let me flip over into Intact and we could take a look at the uh, SAS intelligence. Uh, this dashboard is um, shows those metrics that we were looking at previously. So we things like our total CMRR, our ARR, total bookings and billings. Uh, we're tracking LTV to CAC. Uh, and all of these metrics, we are actually tracking um, period over period. So we can look at the uh, differences between this quarter and prior quarters or this month and prior months. Um, we look at a CMRR and customer breakdown. So we have all of the information um, that's being tracked by the system is being posted into the general ledger uh, such that uh, you can build reports off of it. We've done so through this customer breakdown report, which shows all the CMR into the various buckets that we're tracking, things like our new and add-on and uplift and downgrade. Um, every one of these entries, if you take a look at them, every one of these entries are tracked not only to um, 
the bucket that they reside within, i.e. the new add-on, downgrade and churn, et cetera. They're also tracked to the item dimension of granularity and customer and location. Um, so we're tracking CMRR to a very granular level uh, within the application. Uh, we're also tracking CMR waterfall, i.e. a visualization of your uh, CMRR activity over time. We track things like CMR growth over trailing 12 months, CMR growth breakdown, showing uh, the impact of new CMR expansion, churn, uh, and, um, and con contraction CMRR. We also track dollar retention rates, both net and gross dollar retention rates over time, your net churn and gross churn rates over time, LTV and CAC, as well as LTV to CAC, uh, and it's trending uh, over trailing, trailing 12 months. We're also looking at logo or customer growth uh, and the impact of your total customer count uh, from uh, not only just the beginning customers that you have within each period, but the amount of churn, new or recovered customers that occurred within a given period. We are tracking customer or logo churn over time as a percentage of your entire customer base. And we're tracking customer renewal and retention as additional metrics. Uh, a distinguishing characteristic of the dashboard is that we track uh, customer renewal percentage, which is those customers which are up for renewal or have an opportunity to make a decision whether to renew or not, i.e. those ones that um, are coming up on contract. Uh, and we also track customer retention as a separate metric, uh, i.e those customers which you have retained over your entire customer base. Um, so we're actually able to distinguish um, what your customers who are coming up to make a decision and decisions that they're actually making, whether they've decided to uh, stay with us uh, or if they've decided to churn. We also track your top CMRR uh, customers or top customers by CMRR uh, as a quick view into who are the customers that are probably the most strategic um, to your organization uh, and carrying the most CMRR. So um, we're gonna take a look at a, our process. Um, so the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new contract for uh, in Intact. Um, we're gonna create a contract. Now we are uh, agnostic to how a particular contract comes into the system, whether that's directly entered um, manually or if it's uh, imported or if it's synchronized from an application, a CRM system like a Salesforce uh, or other types of uh, CRM systems. Uh, so we're gonna take a look and uh, we're gonna book our first customer or our contract, our new contract with the Customer Intelligent Insights. And we're going to call this uh, contract name Intelligent Insights New Contract. We're going to have a start date of 1 1 2019. Uh, we're going to have a billing frequency of annually. We'll have an end date of 12 31 2019. And our term is going to be net 30 terms. This is going to be for our location, our US operating entity, uh, Entity 1000. And we're going to go ahead and post this contract. Now, we're going we're gonna to start off by adding some lines into this contract. Um, the first uh, SKU that the customer ordered was our SAS Core application. Again, this is going to be for the same time frame. It's going to be a one-year termed uh, subscription from 1-1 1 -1 to 12-31. Uh, we have a number of different setup for how that gets billed and how it gets revrecked, but for this for this purposes of this demo, we're really going to be focusing on the CMRR impact of these lines. So we're going to say that we have a quantity of one, a rate of 120,000, and a multiplier of one, meaning that this is for one year. So this is a $120,000 line related to the core application subscription. We'll post this line and move on to our next one. So for line two, we're gonna, they're going to uh, subscribe to a number of platform users. Again, this is going to be for a one-year time period. They're going to be buying 10 users at a rate of $100 each uh, per month times 12 months. So this is uh, user months. So this is 10 users at $100 per user per month times 12 months, which gets us $12,000. We'll post this line. Move on to line three. Line three is gonna be our silver support package. Again, this is a one year termed 
uh, subscription for our support at $36,000 per year for one year. And lastly, they'll be purchasing our setup or implementation services. Now, this particular line item is actually a non-subscription line. Uh, so one thing that we expect is that we will not get any CMRR as a result of this, but this is a one-time implementation fee. So we'll post this. Now, while we're at it, we're going to go ahead and bill for the first year, just so that we can see the impact of uh, posting billings on the system. So I'm going to come to contracts, generate invoices. We're going to generate this invoice as of our time period, which is 1-1-2019. And for that contract, for our Intelligent Insights new contract, we'll preview that. What we're expecting to see is a $268,000 invoice, which we do. If we take a look at that, that's, that is uh, comprised of um, our $12,000 core platform application. There's twelve thousand, uh, sorry, one hundred and twenty thousand dollars core platform application, uh, twelve thousand dollars worth of users, thirty-six thousand dollars worth of support, and a hundred thousand dollars worth of setup. Everything's there. It looks great. So we're going to save and we're going to go ahead and generate that invoice. Now let's take a look and see what we're expecting to actually happen here as a result of uh, the introduction of this new contract. So. We had our SaaS core application. Again, that was for a quantity of one, a rate of $120,000 for one year. Uh, that's 12 months. The system is automatically going to identify that this is a new customer, one which we have never seen before, or which we have never had a subscription with before. It's going to take that $120,000 extended value. It's going to divide it by 12 months um, to come up with a $10,000 worth of CMRR value for the SaaS core product. Uh, it's also going to identify that we had SaaS users at a quantity of 10 at a rate of $100, uh, $100 per user per month for 12 months. It's going to take that total extended value of $12,000 divided by 12 to compute a uh, $1,000 worth of CMR against that line. And lastly, for the silver support, it's going to take the $36,000 worth of subscription for the support package. Uh, it will divide that by 12 uh, to compute a $3,000 CMRR for the silver support. So let's go back to the SAS dashboard and see what happened. Again, one thing to note is that because we did have four lines, but as we noted, um, the, uh, uh, the set of services are non-subscription, so we are not expecting to see any CMR uh, related to um, related to that um, to that particular line item. So what we'll see is that for Intelligent Insights, here's our $14,000 worth of CMR that we were expecting. Again, that's our 10, one, and $3,000 CMRR. This equates to a total ARR value of $168,000, i.e. Uh, $14,000 times 12 to annualize it. We had a total SaaS bookings because this was a one-year deal. We see this as $168,000. Had this been a multi-year deal, we would have seen the entire bookings value, but we would have only seen you know, one year's worth of ARR as a posting as a result of that. We'll also notice that we have a billing, so for our $268,000, the invoice that we generated. And because we're sitting at the end of this month, um, and we have not yet paid this invoice off, we'll see that our DSO for this particular customer is sitting at 30 days. Um, we can also see that we now have a total customer count when looking at this particular customer of one. They were a new customer in this period. And because they were $14,000 worth of CMRR, you know, filtered for this particular customer, we see that uh, reflected in our CMR per customer and our average new deal CMRR. We also extrapolate out a lifetime value for this customer, although because uh, there is no churn for this customer, we're going to see a, a fairly high number um, with the system, uh, basically anticipating that uh, this customer could be around for quite some time, uh, given that we have no churn on them just yet. So if we take a look at the uh, customer breakdown report, what we'll see is that that $14,000 worth of CMR value is bucketized automatically into new. Remember, I didn't actually tell the system uh, that this was a, a new deal. It figured that out on its own entirely and bucketized it as such. If we take a look, we can also see that breakdown of the individual items uh, and their 
their specific items and their associated CMRR. If we wanted to, we can also dig into this journal entry and get back to the actual contract should we want to do so for research purposes. Uh, so this makes it very easy to go in and research and reconcile and validate uh, the values that are coming out of the, or into the um, dashboard, uh, such that if you have any questions or you wanna know how that CMR was generated, you can certainly go back and figure that out. Um, one other thing that we'll see is that our new customer count has gone up in this report. We started out with zero, we now have one. So um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna now take a look out into the future. Um, if we take a look out into 2020, if you remember this is a 1119 to 1231 2020, or sorry, 1231 um, contract. So one thing that we're gonna see is that we actually post a, a pending renewal value sitting out into the future. So if we look out into 131, 2020, uh, what the system is telling us is that there's $14,000 worth of CMR value that is coming up for renewal at that time period. This is really nice for being able to look at something like a CMRR available to renew type report. Uh, so you can see of your current CMRR that is that exists uh, for your company, when is that CMR coming up for renewal uh, such that you can get a, a good look at your uh, forecasted CMRR um, and the renewal time periods, how much is coming up in a given period uh, for renewal. So now we're gonna, uh, we're gonna take a look um, at what happens if this customer decides that they wanna add on additional products midterm. So if we come back to our contract, uh, in this scenario, the, our customer has decided that they wanna add 10 more users uh, in midterm into the contract or midway into the contract. Uh, and they're gonna actually renew the, they're gonna add these on at the same price. So if we take our SaaS users, uh, the start date of this is actually gonna be seven one. So it's gonna be a six month time period. Um, and we're gonna build this one time and we're going to have a quantity of another 10 at that same price, $100 per user per month. In this, in this case, instead of 12 months, this is only a six-month term, so that's for six months. So we're going to go ahead and uh, we'll also update our rhetoric schedule to show that as being uh, 7 one to 1231 uh, so that we're recognizing the revenue related to this over a six-month time period. And we'll go ahead and post this entry. If we jump back to our PowerPoint slide, uh, what we'll see is for this 2019 midterm add-on, we had those 10 users at $100 per user per month uh, times a multiplier of six months to get our total amount up to $6,000. Uh, remember that this was only over a six-month time period. So we're going to take the $6,000 divided by six months uh, a year term, and we'll calculate or compute uh, an additional $1,000 worth of CMRR, uh, which should bring our customer up to a total of $15,000 of CMRR. The other thing that's important to note here is, again, I did not tell the system what kind of a uh, line this was. Um, what it did is it automatically detected the fact that this is being added on uh, intra-term. And so, therefore, it is going to categorize this CMRR as an add-on. So let's go back to the uh, dashboard and take a look and see what happened. So we'll go back into the period of 7 1 2019. Okay, so we're going to jump back over to 7 1 2019, back into July of 2019, and see what's happened. Uh, so what we'll see is that our CMR went up by $1,000, which is what we expected that we had that add on. Um, we now see that our total CMR is $15,000. This equates to a total ARR of $180,000. We'll notice that our SAS bookings in this period were that $6,000 that took place. Um, we'll also notice that our net dollar retention rate actually went up by, by a little bit over 7% as a result of this uh, additional CMR onto our existing customer. Uh, if we look at our customer breakdown, what we'll also see is that $1,000 in add-on again, being automatically bucketized by the system uh, and placed into add-on. So here's our $1,000 of CMR for our SaaS users. So that's great. So one other thing that we can look at is if we go back and look back out into our future, back into our 2020 date, we will see correspondingly that our um, CMR is uh, updated to our $15,000 out in 2020. Uh, but we'll also notice that our uh, pending renewal bucket has increased uh, in concert with our $1,000 worth of add-on, uh, showcasing that um, we have $15,000 now that's open, uh, that's coming open for renewal uh, out in January of 2020. 
So now we're going to skip ahead to 2020, and the SaaS Insights is our, our customer here, uh, Intelligent Insights, is going to be renewing our product, uh, but the execution of the renewal is going to be a couple of months late. Um, again, we're agnostic to how this renewal comes into the system. Uh, we can report, we can uh, support renewals directly in Intact or from an external system like uh, Salesforce. So if we come back, what we're going to do is take a look at a renewal contract. Now, I've already pre-populated a renewal contract here so that we don't have to go through um, through the exercise of uh, entering all the line items, but you'll see it's in a state of draft. Um, so if I come into this uh, contract, I'm going to go ahead and post it. Now, one thing that's a little bit unique is that, again, these customer, this customer, we got hung up in getting their renewal processed. Um, they were supposed to renew on January 1 of 2020, but the, the uh, processing didn't come through until 3-1-2020. We're going to go ahead and post it as of 3-1 as a late renewal. And let's look and see what actually renewed. So if we take a look at our line items... What we're going to see is that the, the, the customer uh, renewed our core platform application. Uh, they renewed it for another year, so 1-1-2020 to 12 31 2020 Again, we didn't shut them off. We let them continue to uh, move forward. So our subscription term uh, is going to start up where the old subscription left off, even though we are a couple of months or a few months behind in actually getting it processed. Um, one thing that we'll notice is that uh, we actually had to take, we took a pretty big hit in getting them to renew. So they've decided to reduce the rate of this particular line item from $120,000 to $60,000. So we had to discount them by about 50% uh, in order to retain them on this particular product. Now, uh, consequently, um, in doing so, we were actually able to um, uplift them, uh, or we were able to basically get them to add more users at the same time. So if you recall, we had 10 users originally on the original contract, then we had another 10 users as part of the, uh, as, as an add-on midterm, but in their renewal, they're actually going to be um, purchasing 60 users. So we had an additional 40 users that they added on. Um, we were also able to increase their price by 50%. So they were at $100 per user per month. We're now charging them $150 per user per month. And again, this is 12 month term. So it's going to be for 12 months. Lastly, they decided to drop our silver support package and actually upgrade to our gold support package. Uh, so we'll see that here. It is going to be for a one-year term. And our gold support package is rough, is, is double um, the cost of the silver support package. So we were able to, uh, in essence, upgrade them. So let's go take a look and see what we're expecting to happen as part of, the, um, as part of this uh, renewal contract. So... For our SaaS core product, um, we are expecting that we're going to have renewed CMRR. That renewed CMR is going to be $60,000 of the orig original $120,000 that was renewed. So we take that $60,000, we divide that by 12, and that equates to $5,000 worth of renewed CMRR, i.e. that um, CMR that we were able to retain. We also had markdown, so this was our price reduction of $60,000 of the original 120. So if we take our $60,000, our negative $60,000 divided by 12, we come out with negative $5,000, which will be bucketized as markdown CMRR because of our price reduction. For our SaaS users, uh, we had our original 20 users that renewed at the original $100 per user per month for 12 months. So for our renewed CMR, we're expecting we're going to see that 20 users at the original $100 per user per month for the 12 months. Divide that by 12. And what that means is that we had $2,000 worth of um, SaaS user CMRR that was renewed. Additionally, and this is where a lot of the magic happens, is... Uh, we also identified automatically that there was uplift. So of the original 20 users that renewed, they renewed with a price increase of $50. If you remember, um, the pricing went from $100 per user per month to $150 per user per month. So we're going to take those 20 users, we're going to multiply them by the increase of price of $50 times 12 months. We'll divide that by 12 in order to get that to a monthly rate, which gives us $1,000 worth of uplift CMRR. 
Further, we had an additional 40 users at, a, at the full $150 per user per month rate for 12 months that got added on. So we're going to take the 40, uh, 40 users times $150 per user per month times 12 months. We'll divide that by 12 to get uh, our monthly value, which equates to uh, $6,000 worth of add-on CMRR. All of these entries are going to happen um, as a result of just one line item hitting the system, it automatically detecting what was there previously on the previous contract and what came through as part of the renewal. And lastly, um, our, our uh, SAS Gold support package that came in, we're going to look at that as an add-on. So the system is automatically going to detect that there was $72,000 of product that was not previously on the contract, uh, and it will bucketize this as add-on CMRR. It, that's our $72,000 divided by 12 gets us $6,000 worth of CMRR. It is going to also, as a result of that, identify that the SAS Silver support item was uh, dropped. It was downgraded. So as a result of that, that's $36,000 of product that was not renewed. So it's going to take the negative $36,000 divided by 12, which will give us negative $3,000 worth of downgrade. Okay, so we're going to go back and take a look and see what happened in the dashboard. If we come back, we're going to go out and look in our time period of March of 2020. And what we'll notice is that we went from $15,000 CMR to $20,000 worth of CMR. So even though we had to discount heavily our original line uh, net, we actually increased on this customer. We're going to come back and take a look at some of these other performance cards. But first, let's go look at the breakdown uh, and see what the system did. Uh, and we can confirm uh, based on what uh, we were expecting and what actually happened. So what we'll see is that we have $12,000 that went into add-on. If you recall, that was $6,000 from uh, the users that were added on, those 40 additional users, plus an additional $6,000 worth of gold support. Uh, we also had uplift of $1,000, which was our increase, uh, $50 per user uh, for the increase in price for those users. Uh, we also had downgrade. That was our silver support package being dropped. So that's our negative $3,000 in downgrade. We also had our markdown, which was our 50% uh, reduction in our uh, core offering. Uh, so we see that uh, reflected here as markdown. And we'll also see that we had $7,000 worth of renewal. So if we recall, that's $5,000 worth of our core value plus the $2,000 uh, in users. So that's our $7,000 uh, worth of renewal value. So one other thing that you'll notice that our pending renewal, remember that we had open value sitting out in uh, January, in uh, January of 2020. Um, we'll also notice that that value reversed in uh, March as our renewal came through. So now we have $0 left in pending renewal value. So let's go back to the slide and talk about some of the uh, metrics that we're expecting to see happen. And we'll see those reflected in the dashboard. So the first is our SAS quick ratio. Um, our SAS quick ratio is looking at uh, CMRR growth. Uh, that what we'll see is that we have $13,000 of expansion. Uh, that was our add-on of $12,000 and our uplift of 1,000, uh, divided by our total contraction in the period. We had, again, this is $3,000 in, in downgrade and $5,000 in markdown. Uh, so what that gives us is a SAS quick ratio of 1.63. Uh, we also had a gross CMR renewal rate, i.e. the amount of CMRR that was up for renewal and how much of it actually renewed. So we take our $7,000 in uh, renewal value, uh, renewed value, and we divide that by $15,000 of our pending renewal, which equates to about a 47% uh, gross CMR renewal rate. Um, but what's really interesting is our net CMR return. So if we take our total expansion, less our contraction, what we end up is, is finding out that we have $5,000 of net expansion on this order. Uh, what that means is if we look at our $5,000 worth of net expansion uh, and we divide that by our $15,000 of beginning CMRR, uh, what, that, what that indicates to us is that we actually ended up with a 33% increase in our total CMR value, uh, which is often referred to as net negative churn. Uh, and the corollary to that is that that also means that we had a net dollar retention rate of the 133%. So uh, we were able to retain 100% of what we had uh, in CMR value plus an additional 33%. So if we go back in our dashboard and take a look at that, 
Uh, what we'll see is those values indicated here. So we have our $7,000 in renewed CMRR. We have our quick ratio of 1.63. Uh, we've got our total renewal rate is 100% and our customer retention rate is 100%. But we'll also see our 46 uh you know, 46.767% uh, in our gross CMR renewal and our net dollar retention of 133%. Um, we can also go down and look at how uh, this customer has behaved over time in our reports as we see more information. Um, we can see the, the growth trajectory, the CMR breakdown, as well as those dollar retention rates, as we noted before, there's our uh, net dollar retention of 133%, uh, as well as our, as our uh, net negative churn of effectively 33%. So finally, we're gonna walk through a, uh, a churn. So in the case that our customer uh, decides to churn for one reason or another, um, we have a mechanism by which the uh, user of the application can go in and identify churn and uh, also uh, assign a reason for that churn. Uh, it's a very simple process. All you do is you go into uh, go into contracts, customers. This customers can be accessed in a number of ways, either through AR, order entry, or contracts. If we go find our Intelligent Insights customer and we view that customer record, um, we can see some information about this customer. We can see that they were a customer since 1-1-2019. We can see that our current contract end date is 12-31-2020. If we want to churn that customer, we click the churn button here. The system is automatically going to set a churn date, which is at the end of the current uh, subscription. So we'll notice that it's a 1-1-2021. If for whatever reason we want to or need to let the customer out uh, of their, um, their contract early, or let them churn early, we can do so. So in this case, we're going to say that the customer churned a few months early, maybe June of 2020. So we will say June 30th, 2020. Um, we also enable a uh, fully customized set of churn reasons. So um, this will enable you to determine what churn reasons are appropriate for your uh, particular instance. Um, you can categorize these by avoidable versus unavoidable churn for future um, review and analysis of why are we losing certain customers and what customers are we losing. Uh, in this case, we're gonna say that this customer left us because they were acquired. Uh, so through no fault of our own, this is some unavoidable churn and we'll go ahead and hit, hit process. So the system is going to go through uh, a set of processes to uh, turn that customer, remove their CMRR. This will usually take a few seconds. And when this completes, we're gonna go back to our uh, dashboard and take a look and see what the result is. All right, so the customer has been churned. We'll go ahead and close this out. Go back to our dashboard. Uh, we're gonna go out into our June 2020 time period and take a look at our dashboard again. And what we'll notice is that all of our CMRR and associated metrics have dropped down and reflected that uh, churn. So we'll see that we have now uh, a total of $0 of CMRR, ARR and the like. Um, we have a total customer churn for this particular customer of 100% and net dollar retention rate of $0 as of this time period. We'll see that $20,000 reflected automatically into our churn bucket, negating the existing CMRR and bringing our customer down to zero, as well as a entry into our system uh, that is tracking churn customers with a negative one value that's also bringing that customer count down to zero. All of our uh, dashboard um, components, including our graphs and reports, will show this churn value bringing this customer to zero and the impact that that churn activity has had. Um, so we get a full sense of um, the impact of churn uh, for this particular customer or for the customers at large. Um, and that's uh, typically it from a, uh, a peer demonstration perspective. We also have the ability to recover customers. So if this customer ever did come back to us, they may have um, left and then decided to return to us, we will automatically track that as a recovered customer, which is a neat feature of the dashboard. Um, and in the end, really what this dashboard is doing is it is breaking down all of the activity that's happening uh, in your environment, identifying, analyzing, and using its, its intelligence to uh, determine exactly what's happening and then feeding that data back to you in a very sophisticated manner.